All right, MMA fans, I'm here with PFL Europe lightweight fighter, Mr. Connor Huge. Connor, how are you today, my friend? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for giving us a little bit of your time today. My first question, have you ever been to Germany? Uh, I have actually. I've been to I've been to Hanover when I was a when I was a young kid, uh, competing in kickboxing. But I've never I've never been to Berlin. Um, and how was your experience in Germany on that occasion? How was your journey to Hanover? Mate, I mean, from what I can remember, we had a great time. But I must have been about I must have been about seven, eight at this time. So <laughs> it's it's been a while. Oh, so you're coming from a kickboxing background, right? Yes, yeah. When did you take up MMA then? So I took up MMA at the age of 18. Um, I, I started off in traditional karate uh, and then moved on to kickboxing. Well, I started MMA at 18, so you're looking on, a, you're looking on eight years now. What was it that you liked about MMA at first? Um, you know, I think... Obviously, I'm a I'm a big lover of combat sports. You know, I've I've always watched. I've always watched boxing. Yeah, I've always watched MMA. I've always watched kickboxing. And I think as I was getting a little bit older, you know, I'd I'd pretty much won every junior title in kickboxing that I could win. And I kind of wanted wanted to step up. I wanted something new. And you know, I I, I wanted to kind of become the best fighter in the world and I think the only the only way to do that is is to become an MMA fighter and, and look for the best promotions and, and win the belt there. And how was your transition to you know to grappling uh, uh, in general I you told me that you're coming from a striking background how was your first lessons on the mat? <laughs> <laughs> tough mate. <laughs> tough I guess that <laughs> <laughs> tough for a few years to be honest. Um yeah, I came I came fresh. I had never grappled before, never wrestled before, never done any jujitsu. Um and it was tough really because you know, I, I came from being a world European champion in, in one area and then, you know, getting onto the mat and getting taken down and beaten up for for a few years. Um, you know, and the guys that I trained with at the time when I started, they were all like, you know, on the way to being top level pros. So it was tough, but I think uh, I think it kind of makes up for it now. You're the first fighter from Liverpool to sign with uh, the Professional Fighters League. How much does it mean yeah. for you? Mate, it's a, it's that in itself is a major accomplish, accomplishment for me. You know. Uh, to just be the guy who PFL have, you know, decided we want to, we want this kid to, to be the star from Liverpool and, and, you know, push him forward to, to possibly win the tournament and then going on to the world stage. It's a major, major thing for me, and I'm, I'm excited to, I'm excited to show my skill set, but I'm also excited to represent the city and, and, and show what we're about. There are a few. Great MMA fighters uh, fighting out of Liverpool. Uh, is there anyone in particular whom you are looking up to? Um, no, not really. No, just you know, I I, I respect them all. You know, like you know, Darren Till done done a lot for Liverpool MMA. He brought the the U uh, he brought the USC to Liverpool. Paddy and Molly are doing their thing. Um, again, another door opener to. For Liverpool MMA in the city, um, so no, you know I respect them all. I respect what they're doing, and I think they're doing good things for the city and for the country, really. Uh, but no, I'm 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 here kind of here to make my own footsteps and and leave my own legacy and and do my own thing. You know, I'm not really too focused on on anybody else. I I, I want to make a name for myself, and you know. I want people to talk about me when they when they talk about Liverpool MMA. That's fair enough. Right now, you're scheduled to take on Dylan Tuk on July eighth. How are you preparing for your fight? And uh, it has been described as your toughest uh, test. Do you agree with that? Um, you know, I think I think Tuk, I think a lot of people say that this is my toughest test, including myself as a pro. You know, just purely on the fact that Dylan has fought 
on the likes of other shows. You know, he's fought on Bellator, he's fought on Bama. Um, Tuka's been a pro since 2016, I believe. So, he, he, you know, in terms of the pro game, he does have a lot of experience on me. Toughest test? Uh, I think I think I've had tougher fights as an amateur, if I'm honest. Um, you know, I think for this time in my career and, and where I am, I think this is this is the perfect fight for me stylistically, and you know he is a he is a, a he does have a name in in the MMA world, so I'm excited to to take him out and and show that I'm levels above. You're seven uh, oh right now. You have plenty of finishes on your record, including submissions and uh, finishes by strikes. How much does it mean for you to have that unblemished record? Well, you know, I, I kind of feel like I, I've I've worked for that. You know, I, as an amateur, I took the hardest fight I could. You know, so when I did make the the move to pro, I'd be more than ready, and I think that is what you're seeing now. Um, like I said, I took the hardest fight against the, the the top amateurs at the time, and now I've learned. You know, I, I learned through that period of time, and and now I'm I'm taking everybody out, and I, I'm showing. You know, I. My skills as an MMA fighter, not just a striker as a whole, are developing every time I fight. So, um, my dad, I think, I think everything that's happening for me now is is exactly what's meant to be, and everything I've done before this is has brought me to this point. So, I'm I'm more than excited, and and you know, I'm looking for another finish. I'm looking for another spectacular finish. Are you currently following the PFL regular season? I am, yeah. Um, what do you think about the lightweights? I, I, I mean, respect to them all, but I, again, I think it's all for the taking, to be honest. You know, I have got my eyes on the other lightweights in, in the World League. I am watching them closely and, you know, looking at the fights on, on what I can take up. And, and mate, I think... I think obviously I've got to get my job done in PFL Europe, but if, if PFL gave me the, the call and was like, you know, how do you feel about going to the world stage for a million dollars, I'd take that up in a heartbeat. So I'm watching it very closely. Um, and I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I think I'm not that far away, to be honest. I think I could go in there and I could do some damage and I could win it. So, you know, like I said, respect to them all, but this is, it's all up for grabs, I feel. Right now, you're uh, running for the $100,000 prize. In case of victory, what are you planning to do with that, mate, if I may? <laughs> mate, I mean, to be honest, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be smart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to invest my money. You know, prize fighting doesn't last long. And, I mean, I'm, I'm not even two years in. I've still got a good number of years yet. But, but I'm not daft. You know what I mean? I, I know that my money's got to last me well after fighting. Um, I've got big plans in the future. I have got big plans in the future. Um, but you know, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of just looking forward to to living comfortably a little bit. To be honest, I'm, I'm not stressing about you know money outside of fighting and trying to make things work and keeping everything afloat. You know what I mean? So I'll just. I'll actually be happy when I can take full focus on training and fighting and my diet and everything else without any other worries. So that's that's what I'm looking forward to right now. Ask, ask me in two years' time and I'll probably have a different answer. Of course, of course. And I will ask you in a couple of years. I'm pretty sure of that. Connor, before I let you go, of course, I guess that you seeing, uh, you're seeing yourself uh, as, a, as the winner of the fight. How do you see that happening, though? Honestly, mate, I think I can take out all of them. I, I really do feel like I could take out every opponent in my division. Um, I think there's some fights that are tougher than others. But all in all, I, I honestly do feel like this is this is for the taking and, and this is for, my, for me to take. I'm, I'm planning on going straight through the division. You know... Like I said, if if there's some tougher fights, if there's some that go the distance, then then so be it. But this is this is life changing for me, and and aside from it being life changing, this is also you know, I feel like this is a moment for me where, you know, that 
this now kind of determines everything within my future. You know, of course, people have setbacks and whatever, but I feel like everything I've done before MMA leading up to this has all getting me set up for, for something special. So I can't wait uh, to perform. I can't wait to show what I'm about. And I do. I think this is the start of something magical, mate. Connor, thank you very much for giving us a little bit of your time today. Best of luck with the upcoming fight, and hopefully I will hear again from you in the future, mate. Definitely, mate. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.